Hello again, and welcome back to the third part of this portrait drawing series with me, Ryan, on One Vanguard. If you haven't seen the first two parts, then please check them out first. In this episode, we're going to be finishing off our drawings, and I'm going to be giving you some pointers on how to create realistic looking fabric. First of all, look at the reference image again. Try to study the different folds and creases, and then draw just the outlines of these on your paper. These lines are just guidelines to help you work out the positions of these folds later. These guidelines need to look quite organic and flowing, like a river, because fabric, um, well, fabric looks organic. If it's rigid, it's not going to look as realistic. So try and keep um, your hand freer when drawing. Because the fabric which I'm drawing is black, I'm putting down a dark tone first to cover the entire area and serve as a base layer. If the fabric is white, however, you wouldn't do this step. Now I'm just using the tissue to smudge the layer and blend it all in to create one um, even tone. Now, the next stage is to block in the really dark shapes, the areas of shadow. I'm just doing this in a, a medium darkness. They will eventually become almost black, but for now, I'm leaving them unblended and a lighter tone. Your original guidelines should now have been covered up at this point. Try to keep your pencil shading going in the same direction as which the fabric is falling. So. If the folds are falling downwards and curving, keep your pencil lines following downwards and curving to match. It just looks um, more professional and it'll create it'll make it look more realistic and it will add to the three Dness and bring it more to life. It also makes it easier to follow the way that which the fabric is falling. If you was just um, shading it in just at a random angle, then you're going to be um, coming to problems where as you're drawing the line, it's going to be changing tone and stuff. But if you keep in the same way which the fabric is going, then it'll be each line will be the same tone. Yeah, if that makes sense. Now, I think this is the uh, fourth layer. I'm now darkening up the areas, creating a sm and creating a smoother transition between dark and light. Do you see the highest peaks of the folds of fabric? I'm leaving this part quite light. This is where the light is most intense, and it will give the drawing good contrast. Drawing fabric is almost like drawing landscape, in that the fabric, when wrinkled, resembles hills and mountains, with valleys and large hills protruding from the surface. The fabric needs to be studied to see where the light falls and the shadows are cast. If you can remember back to the first episode, I was talking about planes. I was saying, imagine the face in a box. The face will be on the front plane of the box and the side of the head will be on the side plane of the box. Well, the same principle is applied here. Imagine where the planes will be on the fabric. In the image, the fabric is bending around her shoulder. So you can see the side of the plane and a small proportion of the front of the plane. The light is shining mostly on the front plane, and so the side plane is in shadow. That's why the left side of the fabric is mostly dark. To finish off this portion of fabric, 
I'm using a 6B pencil really heavily. Any mistakes made at this stage won't be able to be corrected, so be careful. To start off with, um, use the pencil slowly and lightly, and then gradually get darker and darker until you achieve the tone which you know, is needed. Now that we've completed that part of the fabric, let's move on to the more delicate fabric of the white lacing which surrounds the black material. Starting in the same way as which you did for the black fabric, in extremely light pencil, mark out where the darkest areas of shadow will be. But, unlike the black fabric however, we aren't going to be putting down a base tone first. You'll be leaving a large proportion of this fabric virtually white. We're just going to create subtle changes between the shadows and light areas. Only small areas of this will be the darkest, and they won't even be that dark. Probably, they will be just a bit darker than the lightest parts of the black fabric. Try to remember not to draw a solid line where the light fabric ends and meets the rest of the blank paper. Instead, just add a subtle gradient starting darker at the edge and then fading lighter. If you look at your reference image you'll notice that solid lines only occur when a solid black object meets a light one. I will slow the video down to normal speed here and bring it closer so you can see clearer how I shade and maybe see some of the techniques I've spoke about. This is the darkest part of the white fabric because the surface is covered by the top plane. As a result of this, a lot of shadowing happens here. As you can clearly see, the shadowing on this fabric is quite light in comparison to the shadowing on the fabric which we did earlier. Another technique to help you draw fabric better is with cylinders. Imagine each fold of the fabric as a cylinder and visualise where the lights will fall on the surface. These cylinders will follow the form of whatever the fabric is covering. So, if the fabric is going over a round object, the cylinders will curve round to match the form of the object. Ok, I'll draw an example for you to show how this technique looks and works. First of all, I'm just going to do a really basic line drawing of a piece of fabric 
draped over a tube. Now, to add the creases and folds to the fabric, first I'm just going to draw some um, lines to indicate where the locations are. Next, I'm now making these lines cylindrical. Finally, shade in these cylindrical shapes, leaving light spots at the top and making the shadows really dark to give a good contrast. This example is a bit rough because I was only using one hand and I was filming with the other hand so it was quite hard. At last, we finally finished. If you've made it this far, well done. You've now completed a portrait drawing. I hope this was a useful um, tutorial, and I hope to bring you more like this in the future. I'm just now going to show you the original photo, and then blend it into my drawing to show you the similarities and how close to reality I got it. Thanks for watching everybody, hope to see you again soon.